Welcome back. We are so close to finishing now. This will be the second last video in the SAP 6502 microcode series, and we're going to implement the push, pull, jump, jump to subroutine, and return from subroutine instructions. So this is going to be a big one. The idea of a stack dates back to the earliest days in computing, and it's quite simple. It's like a stack of plates with information stored on them. We can push a value onto the stack, or pull a value from the stack. But at any one point in time, we only have access to the value on top of the stack. To look at the value stored on the bottom plate, we need to remove all the plates above it. In the 6502, the stack is a special piece of memory located at page 1, between 100 and 1 FF hexadecimal. There's nothing special about this memory per se, it's just that stack operations will point to this page and only this page. This may seem a little odd at first, but the stack actually starts at 1FF and we build down rather than build up. The push A instruction writes the value stored in the A register to the memory location pointed to by the stack pointer plus 100 hex. Then stack pointer is decremented. Pull A is the reverse. We increment the stack pointer, then read from memory location 100 plus stack pointer. We then store the result in the A register. We also have instructions for pushing and pulling the status register. We have the push A instruction at location 94F7. The value stored in the stack pointer is copied into EAL, and the constant 1 is copied into EAH. The value stored in the A register, which is 0 in this case, is copied into the main memory at location 1E2. Then after this, we decrement the stack pointer. Now we see the pull A instruction at 951B. We increment the stack pointer, store it in EAL, and move 1 into EAH. Then we do a main memory read from this location into the A register. Looking at the architectural diagram for the 6502, we can see that it has a dedicated stack register, but from what I can see, it must still use the ALU to increment and decrement it. The push A instruction is pretty straightforward, it doesn't update any flags. The pull A instruction, however, does update the flags, so I'm going to need to run this value through the ALU so I can set or clear the negative and zero flags appropriately. The push P instruction pushes the value of the status register onto the stack, but it doesn't actually change any of the values, while the pull P instruction can potentially change all of the flags based on what it reads from the stack. So far, we've used dedicated instructions or the ALU to update the flags, but there's actually a third pathway which comes from the WBUS itself. The push P and pull P instructions use this third WBUS pathway, so we don't actually need to run these values through the ALU. This means, out of these four instructions, it's only the pull A instruction that needs to be run through the ALU to update the negative and zero flags. Let's start on the push A code. I'll tick the OR A to use as a template. The first thing I need to do is move the stack pointer register into the EAL register and the constant 1 into the EAH register. Just a reminder that the constant itself was only 4 bits, but it gets signed extended to 8 bits in hardware. The EA register now points to the top of the stack, and I want to do a main memory write of the contents of the A register to this location. I drive the contents of the accumulator onto the W bus. I assert the M write and M access signals without asserting PC select. This means the effective address registers will be driving the address lines on the memory. And I've just pushed the value of the accumulator onto the stack. Next, I need to decrement the stack pointer, and I'm going to have to use the ALU for this. I copy the value in the stack pointer into the B register. I load the constant FF into the A hold register, then I do an ALU addition, making sure that the carry going in is clear. I also need to make sure we don't use decimal mode. That should be it for this instruction, so I'll assert micro counter reset. Uh, I'm still actually using the constant value of 1, so I need to go back and fix that to be 0F. 
I can pretty much copy and paste this code wholesale for the push P instruction. I just need to change the register driving the W bus during the write to be the status register rather than the accumulator. Other than that, these two instructions are identical. Again, I'm going to copy and paste the code I've already written for the pull A instruction, except this time I need to increment the stack pointer first. I do this by copying the stack pointer into the B register. Load the constant 1 into the A hold register, perform an ALU addition, and store the result back into the stack pointer. Now I want to load the stack pointer into the EA registers, so I load the stack pointer into EAL and the constant 1 into EAH. But this time, instead of doing a main memory write, I do a main memory read. But remember that I still need to run this value through the ALU, so I set the negative and zero flags appropriately. I read the value into the B register. I instruct the ALU to do a B register pass through while updating the negative and zero flags, and then I direct the output of the ALU into the accumulator. I can copy and paste this for the pull P instruction. I just need to change the destination from the accumulator to the status register. As usual, I enable all of these instructions through SAP 6502 cycles. Now, I could check these individually, but I'm going to try for the Hail Mary Doug Flutie style. Three wide receivers out to the right. Flutie flushed. Throws it down. Caught by Boston College. I don't believe it. Oh. It's a touchdown. <laughs> Come on, admit it. We've all tried it before. Compile it. And no. Let's examine the code a bit more carefully and see if we can find an obvious error. Remember that I like to do this before any functional testing. And there we have it. Do you see it? When I copied over the original code from the OR A instruction, I didn't actually use the correct ALU command. I just need to update it now in all four of these new instructions. Compile and run this. And still no. Well, that was a bit of a surprise. I'll disable all of them except for the push A instruction. Compile it. And there we go, it's working. So it's not the push A instruction that's the problem. Next, I'll try the pull A instruction and see if it works. Compile it. And yeah, that seems to be where the problem is. I know the bugs in this part of the code, so let's just do another visual inspection and see if we can find it. Writing microcode can be very unforgiving from a bug perspective. Just the tiniest of mistakes and everything falls apart. Ah, the bugs here where I do the main memory read. I'm driving the value in the B register onto the W bus rather than reading the value from the W bus into the B register. I've probably done the same thing in pull P. Yep, there it is. Let's compile it and give it a try. And it's working. So you may have noticed a small error here that I picked up in post edit. I don't actually need to recompute the negative and zero flag on the pull P instruction. It might actually cause some problems. So I'll get rid of this in the final version of the code. Now that I've got the push and pull instructions going, I want to have a quick look at jump. The jump instruction is an unconditional jump, so it changes the flow of the program sequence. It's a three byte instruction, which consists of one opcode, which is 4C in hexadecimal, then two address bytes. The address is in little endian format, which means that the lower eight bits of the jump comes first, then the upper eight bits. Let's look at this example of the jump instruction at 7BE0. We see the 4C opcode, which is the jump, followed by BC, which goes into PCL, and 7B, which goes into PCH. This means the next instruction to be executed is at 7BBC and not 7BE3. The jump instruction should be pretty straightforward. It's just a memory read into PCL, increment the program counter, then another memory read into PCH. But have you spotted the problem with this? The fly in the ointment, 
is that we can't do the read directly into PCL first because we still need the old contents of PCL to do the second read. Instead, I'm going to use the temporary register EBL as the storage for the lower 8 bits. Next, I increment the program counter and do the second memory read, but this time I can load directly into PCH. Then I just need to transfer the contents of EBL into PCL. Jump indirect is very similar. I just need to do this in direction twice. I load the address into the program counter like I did with jump. Then I do it again. Done. Compile and run it. And no. Looking at the code, there's a couple of things wrong here. And this is slightly self-inflicted because the emulator doesn't perfectly match the hardware. This combination of PC clock low and PC clock high increments the program counter instead of loading it. There's actually a second bug here as well that I won't find until I try running it on the real hardware. But more of that next video. For now, I'll just make these changes which will make the emulator happy. Compile it. And looking good. Now we finally get to move on to the jump to subroutine instruction, or JSR. Again, this is a 3-byte instruction. Its opcode is 20 hexadecimal. I have to admit, the first time I tried to implement JSR, I completely messed it up. Let's quickly walk through an example. We see this fragment of code on the left, and we can identify some instructions. Set decimal mode. Load A from 0 page address 52. Add the value of 10. Then jump to a subroutine at location 7D52. What actually happens at this point is the program control jumps to 7D52, but before it does, it saves the return address on the stack. I initially thought the return address would be the start of the next instruction, but it's actually not. It stores the address of the third byte of the JSR instruction. This is a bit tricky. So in this case, it stores the address 7AFC on the stack, but the next instruction is located at 7AFD. After the JSR instruction, program control goes off to 7D52. It does another add with carry of 10. Next, we see the RTS, or return from subroutine instruction. This returns control back to the location stored on the stack, plus 1. So it starts executing from 7AFD. Initially, I thought it didn't really matter which address we stored, provided JSR and RTS agree on the next instruction location. But it turns out this actually matters in the Apple II BIOS, and it doesn't work if it's not implemented correctly. Looking at the definition of the instruction, we basically push the program counter on the stack, and then do a jump. The program counter is 16 bits, so we actually need to push PCH and PCL individually. I'm going to approach the JSR command a little differently. I start with the high-level command, which is JSR, and an address specified by the operands. I can break this down into read operand 1, push PCH, push PCL, read operand 2, then jump to the location specified by the operands. I can break down the push instruction even further, and then convert this into individual micro-instructions. We start off with the instruction fetch, which is done by the previous instruction, so we can just forget that for now. We copy the byte at the next location into the EBL register and increment the program counter by 1. Main memory read from the address pointed to by the program counter. I store the result in EBL for temporary storage, then increment the program counter at the end of the micro instruction. I need to do a push PCH, so I'm going to grab the push A microcode and copy it into JSR. I move the value in the stack pointer into EAL, and the constant 1 into EAH. But now I have a problem. If I try and write the value of PCH to the location pointed to by the EA registers, I'll get contention on the address lines. So I need to copy the value of PCH into EBH first, then write EBH to the main memory pointed to by the EA registers. Once that's done, I need to decrement the stack pointer. 
I start by moving into the B register. I move the constant FF into the A hold register and perform an addition, then store the result in EAL. I need to do another push, this time PCL. Now I move PCL into EBH for temporary storage. I do the main memory write to the location pointed to by the EA registers, which is part of the second push. The top of stack is now stored in the EAL register, so I want to decrement that again and save it back to the stack pointer. At this point, the two pushes have been done, and I can read the upper byte of the new address into PCH. The lower byte of the new address is stored in EBL, so I just transfer that to PCL, and I'm done. This is a pretty complex instruction, so you might want to spend some time going over it again. If you can get your head around this, everything should fall into place. Despite a popular belief and some evidence to the contrary, I sometimes do actually clean up code and comment it. Here's one of those rare occasions, so make sure you savour it. The return from subroutine instruction is in many ways the reverse of the jump to subroutine instruction. We pull the 16-bit program counter address from the stack, increment it by one, and then start executing from this new address. I'm going to use the JSR instruction as a template. It contains many of the micro instructions I need, and I just need to reorder them. The first thing I need to do is increment the stack pointer. Copy the stack pointer into the B register, constant one into the A hold register, ALU addition and save the results in EAL. Load the constant 1 into EAH. I need this constant 1 because the stack is stored in page 1 of the main memory. Next, I do a main memory read from the address pointed to by the effective address registers. I can perform this read even though I can't do the equivalent write because this time there's no contention on the address lines. I need to increment top of stack by 1. The A hold register already has the value of 1. Move EAL into B reg, perform the addition, and store it back in EAL. I do a main memory read from this address, store it in PCH. The current effective address is the top of stack, so I need to move EAL back into the stack pointer register. Finally, I need to increment the program counter by 1. I've already enabled these instructions in SAP 6502 cycles. So let's compile it, give it a go, and excellent, it works. This was a bit of a Hail Mary debug also, but this time it paid off. That's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one for the grand finale.